And now from McAllen City Hall, a meeting of the McAllen City Commission. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Commission meeting. We're going to start off with a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by invocation by Commissioner Zamora. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could please remain standing. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the many blessings you've given us in our family and this community. Please guide this Board of Commissioners with wisdom and discernment in making the decisions that make an impact in making our community a better and brighter future for our children and for future generations. We thank you for all these things, for the change in the season, for the wonderful weather, and on a personal note, Lord, thank you for God's favor in giving the University of Texas a shutout win over Oklahoma. Amen. <laughs> Amen, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> We have a few proclamations. We'll go first with Fire Prevention Week, Mayor Pro Tem Zamora. I like your tie. Well, thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Right, gentlemen, all the way through. Right. Okay. You want to leave anybody out? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's balance it out, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're good. And of course, we're joined by Sparky. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. City of McAllen Proclamation, State of Texas, County of Hidalgo, City of McAllen. Whereas the City of McAllen is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting our great city. And whereas U.S. fire departments responded to 356,500 home fires in 2020 alone, resulting in 2,580 civilian deaths, making, a fire a, making fires a serious public concern, both locally and nationally. And whereas McAllen residents should identify places in their home where fires can start and eliminate those hazards, and whereas McAllen residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room outside each separate sleeping area and on every level of the home. And whereas McAllen's first responders are dedicated to reducing home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the 2022 Fire Prevention Week theme, Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape, effectively serves to remind us that it is important to have a home fire escape plan. Now, therefore, I, Joaquin Samuara, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of McAllen, by virtue of the authority vested in me, and on behalf of the Mayor and the Board of City Commissioners, do hereby proclaim October 9th through October 15th, 2022, as Fire Prevention Week. Signed by my hand, Joaquin Samuara, Mayor Pro Tem. And uh, Chief Schultz, I'm sure you have some words to say. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. First, let me thank the, uh, the Mayor and the Commission for this proclamation. Um, every year, we take time out of our schedule and concentrate on what we call Fire Prevention Week and Fire Prevention Month. And many of you may know, some of you may not know, this was all predicated on a huge fire back in 1871 called the Great Chicago Fire. That fire killed over 300 people, burned over 100,000 structures, covered an area of 3.3 miles, square miles. The equivalent today in destruction as far as property costs is $8.4 billion. At that point going forward, the United States realized they needed to do something about fire education. And that's what we're doing this week. October 9th, whatever week that date falls, is when we have our Fire Prevention Week. But not only is it a week, but it's a, a, a month-long event for us to really concentrate to go out and educate the public on fire prevention efforts. As is uh, read in the... Uh, the proclamation, fire won't wait, plan your escape. That's something we're concentrating on this year. That's the message, the motto for this year. Um, but we can't let it just be one week or one month a year. This has to be all the time that people think about this. So we have a lot of our firefighters here. We have Sparky here. I don't know if Sparky wants to say a few words. Okay. All right. <laughs> Th thank you all very much. Much Round appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, 
And next we have a Native Plant Month Proclamation by Commissioner Pepe Cabeza de Vaca. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm a big, big proponent of native plants and, and uh, you know how beautiful they look uh, around the city and, and with a, not very much maintenance. So it makes it very, very nice. City of McAllen Proclamation, State of Texas, County of Hidalgo, City of McAllen. Whereas native plants are an important part of the natural heritage, history, and identity of the City of McAllen, and whereas the Tamalipan thorn forest and other habitats in the Rio Grande Valley give our region unique landscapes that support plants and animals found nowhere else in the United States. And whereas the Center for Urban Ecology at Quinta Mazatlan celebrates annually with Planta Nativa activities including native plant workshops, speakers, native gardens contests, children's programs, native tree giveaways for schools and homeowners, and educational public relations. And whereas native plants provide economic benefits for the city by helping to grow the business of ecotourism, encouraging visitors from around the world to visit our beautiful natural, natural areas in the city of McAllen. And whereas our native plant help us conserve water through their drought resistant adaptations and add beauty to our city. And whereas the city of McAllen encourages residents to use native plants in the gardens and landscapes for the benefit of the people and wildlife. Now thereof, I, Pepe Cabeza de Vaca, City Commissioner of the City of McAllen, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me and on behalf of the Mayor and the City Commission, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2022 as Native Plants Month. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mayor and City Commissioner, for this proclamation celebrating our natural world. Uh, we are home to over 1,000 native plants that make the valley our home so very special. Kitsmazatlan is hosting many fun educational programs this month, such as the Native Garden Contest, whether small or large. Have fun entering your native garden in the contest, plus a tree giveaway, some of which you see here, uh, the beautiful Mexican ash tree, also known as the Fresno, is a great tree for birds to nest in. They can grow up to 40 feet tall. They can also provide some nice shade. We especially invite schools to pick up the tree saplings and host a tree planting on campus as Texas celebrates native plants next week. We're happy to supply 10 or more trees for your campus. Just let us know what you need. We also encourage homeowners to come pick up a tree sapling or two. There's a simple application, just call Kintamazatlan. We are thankful to our city leadership donors and all our partners for the opportunity to support the environment, economy, education, and health for all. We call it the three E's. And in closing, to be a bit trite, may the forest be with you. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bali. We have Chiropractic, Chiropractic Health Month, Commissioner Quintanilla. Thank you. Now on to our health. How you doing, Doctor? Thank you all for joining us. I'm proud to give the following proclamation. Whereas the opioid crisis continues to take a toll on the health and lives of millions of Americans and has worsened in some communities during the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the interest in and need for greater access to safe and effective non-drug, non-invasive approaches to pain management has increased. Whereas the American College of Physicians released updated low back pain treatment guidelines in 2017 that promote the use of non-invasive, non-drug approaches such as spinal manipulation as a first line of defense against back pain before the use of pain medication and surgery. Whereas a doctor of chiropractic who focuses on the whole person 
with their non-drug, non-invasive treatment for pain management, most notably spinal manipulation, can play an important role in helping patients lessen their reliance on pain medication. Whereas with the theme of chiropractic on the front line for pain, Chiropractic Health Month 2022 serves as a reminder for citizens in the city of McAllen, Texas, that non-drug treatments for low back pain, such as spinal manipulation provided by doctor of chiropractic, can help to lessen or eliminate the need for riskier, potentially addictive treatments and should be utilized where appropriate before starting prescription opioid pain medication. Now, therefore, I, Omar Quintanilla, City Commissioner of the City of McAllen, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me and on behalf of the Mayor and City Commission, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2022 as Chiropractic Health Month. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Mayor, for allowing me to have this proclamation be sent, as well as you city commissioners as well. It's good to see all of y'all, and of course, city manager, it's great to see you guys as well. Um, National Chiropractic Month is October, and we're just very, very blessed and fortunate to have City of McAllen uh, go ahead and proclaim that chiropractic is a natural way to help prevent this opioid crisis. This is a severe pandemic that's affecting all over the country, all over the nation, and it's great to see that the city of McAllen is proactive in understanding that there is a different means to treatment besides opioid treatment. And us as a chiropractor, my colleagues, uh, my profession, this is a great day for the city of McAllen, and we're just very, very blessed that, that, that you guys would take the stance and understanding and recognizing October B. National Chiropractic Health Month. It is recognized by the Texas Chiropractic Association, American Chiropractic Association, and um, we are just so thankful that we continue to give the best type of treatment that we can to prevent people from getting stuck into the pharmaceutical swirl of taking opioids. So we're very, very blessed. It's a great day for all of us, and, and thank you for my colleagues for attending this day, and again, thank you, Commissioner, for allowing us to, to take this proclamation. This is a big deal for us. Thank you so much. We're great. Day. Next item is public hearings. Mayor, Commissioner, good evening. Tonight we have uh, two routine items. They're both conditional use permits. As always, they come with a favorable recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting and received no opposition. Uh, they can be approved in one motion or discussed separately as desired. They are a conditional use permit for life of the use for a single family dwelling in a commercial zone at 2014 Austin Avenue and a conditional use permit for one year for a food truck park at 4300 South Ware Road. Okay, do I have anybody here speak uh, against the issues? There's no opposition, which would approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against, motion carries, item B. This is an initial zoning at 7201 North Taylor Road. This property is located on the north side of Thunderbird between Taylor and 56th. It is total uh, 9.394 acres. Tract is currently in the ETJ and has requested voluntary annexation for a proposed 40 lot uh, single family home development. Uh, Jason zoning is R1 to the north and west, AO to the east, and then other properties in the ETJ to the south. Uh, development trend for this area is single family homes. Uh, the item was presented at September 20th, Plan Zoning Commission meeting. There was no opposition and unanimously recommended for approval. Any opposition to this item? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? <coughs> Motion carries. Item two. Item B2 will uh, be maintained on the table. Excellent. Item C. This is a conditional use permit for one year um, for a bar and vape shop at 400 Nolana, Suite D. Uh, this property is located along the north side of Nolana between 4th and 6th. It is zone C3. Adjacent zoning is C3 to the north to the west, south, and east, C1 to the north. Uh, surrounding uses include businesses, offices, restaurants, as well as single and multifamily homes. This is the applicant's initial conditional use permit application for this location. They are proposing to operate a bar and a vape shop from 12 to 12 daily. Uh, staff did receive one email in opposition to the request citing noise, trash, and parking. 
Uh, the item was presented at the September 20th Plan and Zoning Commission meeting. There was no opposition at the meeting, and it was unanimously disapproved with a favorable recommendation. Do I have anybody here to speak against the item? Um, yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, my name is Marlo Fonseca Martinez. I am the homeowner at 329 Primrose Avenue. I am located directly east of Nolana Towers. I'm the first house in the residential area uh, right behind the, um, the other complex that houses doctors and insurances. And um, I strongly oppose another bar or um, any other kind of business. Um, I, it's kind of like downtown McAllen was moved uptown um, without any consideration for the residential area surrounding that area. Um, we literally cannot sleep at night. Uh, every day at two in the morning, we're woken up by traffic, yelling, honking, blaring uh, sound systems. Um, I have a seven and a nine year old who wake up crying, asking me to call the police. Why are people so rude? Why can't you know they be quiet? I've had to call the cops several times. Um, I've gone into my own car and patrolled the parking lot to ask people to please move along. Um, there have been multiple fights, multiple having to call 911. Um, I just feel like this is already going to be one too many. I think there's already, what, a total of eight bars around there. Um, there's also an issue of the premise that they are operating under a bar or kitchen when in reality it is a nightclub because they do, um, you know, have DJs going. Uh, our, our walls literally shake. Our floors tremble. Um, I'll, I invite any one of you to come to my house to uh, have the party there because literally it's like we're in the middle of it. I mean, we can hear everything. We can hear everything going on, um, music, voices. Um, the daycare that's, that's directly our neighbor, um, it's kind of like the sound kind of ricochets into our home. My children's bedrooms are on the west side of the house. So, I mean, they bear the brunt of it. So they literally cannot sleep in their bedrooms. And it's come to a point where, I mean, do we sell the house? Because it's really ridiculous. We cannot sleep. Um, of course, there is also the trash. Um, they're constantly breaking down the fence. Um, so I really feel like it needs to be taken into consideration. I mean, these bars and the patrons that go there, um, the nightlife, um, it's either the bar owners or the owner of the complex that needs to up their responsibility and um, security to um, you know, usher people out of there. Um, or a concrete fence needs to be built between myself and the complex to you know, bear the brunt of the sound because I really do not think they're operating with the proper sound barriers in any of the bars because I can hear everything. And like I said, you all are welcome to my bedrooms you know, to come in and hear what the problem is, because it's very sad for us. Um, it's our home, we're taxpayers. It should be our place of a safe haven to get a good night's sleep. And that is not happening. That's not happening at all. Excellent. Anybody? What, do you have? what about, I guess what I can kind of figure out about noise issues around the area. Right, What what is a security plan there? And, and second is, uh, is a barrier uh, possible in that area? So for uh, bars outside of the ECOD, there is no security plan that is required. It's basically just whatever is inside. Um, and you're not even, strictly speaking, required um, uh, security like you are in the ECOD. Um, as far as whether a wall can be built, I mean, it's certainly possible. It wouldn't have been required because there is a street between the commercial and the residential zone, so we don't consider that to be adjacent. Um, so we, we wouldn't have required back then. And but this is something that we can certainly bring up to the developer, but I mean, they would have the option of doing that. Or what not. was the use in this space before? It was a restaurant, I believe, just simple restaurant, I guess. But, but it kind of seems that even regardless of this one, whether it comes in or not, there, there may be issues already there. There, I mean, there, there are now, uh, she is correct, about eight uh, locales there that have bar CUPs. And, and, and that's, 
I mean, that's it's fine. I have bars, eight, mm -hmm. nine, ten, whatever it is. But the issue is the noise. <clears throat> if that's indeed happening, I mean, why haven't we taken a look at it or, <coughs> or what's going on? That I, I, I can't address that. I know when I've called mm -hmm. the police, um, and I've called the city, I've called your offices, they've given me a number to a 24-hour hotline that somebody will come out to check the decibels. Nobody answers that line. I've called several times, so that's why I just keep calling the police. Mm -hmm. Please keep telling me, can't do anything about it. I did have one police uh, policewoman come, and she's like, it's really loud, and she <coughs> did go, and one of the bars had their door open. She did instruct them that they needed to close it, uh, but she did, I mean, also, you know, agree, like, probably the decibels is, is too close, you know, for comfort because um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's really terrible. Mm, okay, PNZ, PNZ approved it. We have the issue of, and I guess we, we can, uh, it was unanimous, but I guess the, the concern I have is not necessarily just this one, but if that's happening, the loud music, especially at two, two in the morning, and like you just stated right now, that loud music wasn't even a business. In, but a vehicle, so we can maybe do a little more, not security, but whatever we need to do there. Is it one owner with all these tenants? So we would have to be talking to the, uh, yeah. the owner. I've tried to call him, he hasn't called me back. <clears throat> now, yeah. are, you, well, okay. are you familiar with your neighbors? Often? I am. I mean, have, have I, any other neighbors approached you or you approached them concerned um, the same concern? They have, but I feel like we're important enough. We're one family and we're important enough. I mean, it, we do bear the brunt of all the noise. We, I mean, like I said, um, that wall, you know, kind of ricochets. And then, you know, as they're opening and closing doors, you know, with their DJs and the music, I mean, you know, it's not just only the cars at 2 in the morning, but I can hear all the music in my home um, as it's going on, you know, so... Uh, yes, I, I have talked to them. I mean, I, did, I know I did get the recommendation to get petitions and signatures and this and that. Um, but I mean, I'm busy too, <laughs> you know. Okay. So it's, but um, yeah. Okay. Do we have anybody else, I guess, uh, against or for? <coughs> yes. Come. I'm, I'm going to be the one to kind of open up that place you talked about. Yeah. Can you come forward, please? Can I sit? Yes. Thank you. So we've had meetings with our, our landlord, and he does have security patrolling outside. I do agree it does become a little loud, but what I'm trying to open up, because I'm going to serve alcohol, I do have to go for the CUP and present all that, but I'm not even require, I'm not even going to have a late night permit. My majority of sales is going to be a, a sneaker. I'm going to be selling shoes and clothing. I'm just offering the, uh, I'm going to be selling alcohol as well but it's going to be more crowd cocktails. Most of the days I plan on closing by 10 p.m. So when it comes to the noise, I do, I've been in the plaza, I do agree, it can be a little loud. I know the landlord was working on ballet, adding more parking to the backside. I know he's working on that, but it, I don't think it'll happen overnight. He has added about 40 parking spaces already. Um, I know he wanted to get ballet. He's, he, he's been working on, on getting it, but I can't speak for him because I'm just going to be his tenant. Uh, but what I was going to... Majority of my business was going to be a retail store with like shoes, clothing, uh, caps, um, thing, things of that nature. Uh, most of the days I'll be closing by t uh, 10 p.m. Uh, I did want to have art shows and uh, things of that nature, so I wanted to apply for my my liquor license, which is why I'm I had to come present my okay. my business yeah. for that. Um, right. There'll be a coffee shop as well, but I plan on opening up early and closing by by 10, 12 the latest on the weekends. Thank you, sir. Is there so anybody else? Actually, actually go ahead. He's, he's, go ahead. he's asking for 12 to 12. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that gives me a little good hint of like, it's not going to be a club or, yeah. you know, something like that. I mean, I agree. What is the primary purpose of uh, the business you plan to operate or operating? It's going to be a clothing, it's going to be retail with clothing and shoes. So the, the vaping and the cocktails, the mixed drink are all ancillary to okay. the retail? Yeah, it's just kind of like a cherry on top. Um, I wanted to be able to kind of offer it to, so it's going to, what I wanted to do is not, I don't want to call it like a sports bar, but I want to be sell, uh, selling, it was supposed to be like a men's boutique where guys can go buy clothes, shoes, caps, sports cards, uh, showing the games. And then I was going to offer 
it was going to be cocktails, but it wasn't going to be anything of like crazy nature. It was just going to be like more like old fashioned, higher end cocktails. But I didn't apply for my late night permit. I don't plan on being open, opening, opening late. I wasn't trying to turn into a club or a shop bar, or anything of that nature. Um, so with like traffic and all that past two, I won't even, I'll be close by then. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No, Anybody no. else for or against? If not, commission? Want to make a motion? Oh, sorry. Oh. You want to make a motion? I'll make, uh, Mayor, at this time, I'll make a motion to approve the conditional use permit as requested by the applicant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. The next item. We are recommending <clears throat> this next item uh, at 8200 North Ware be tabled. Motion to table. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. I need a motion to amend the zoning ordinance of the city of Macau. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. And we have item D, public hearing for annexation of 9.394 acres. Yes, sir. So this property, again, is located on the north side of Thunderbird between Taylor and 56. It was the property um, that we just initially rezoned to R1. It got preliminary approval for the subdivision on July 26th at PNZ. Um, and the track, like I said, is currently in the TJA. They're voluntarily annex annexing. Uh, we have not received opposition, and we do recommend annexation. Does anybody here against the item? If not, we'll close. I have a motion to approve. I'll move to approve. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. We have consent agenda items A through K. Through K. Do we need to pull out anything? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Item 3A. 3A, Mayor and Commission's consideration approval of change order number one for Trenton Road at Auburn. Mayor and Commission, the item before you is a change order for a storm sewer manhole that was in the plans but not in the bid quantities. Mm -hmm. The cost is $5,000 with no additional days and staff recommends approval and we will entertain any questions. Any questions? A real quick question, not really pertaining to this but to that intersection. I, I recall there was an issue with regards to maybe a gas line and there had to be a move or so we have we have several utilities that are being relocated as part of the project magic valley um is one of them that was a gas line those have been proceeding to move uh the gas line has been moved we have aep that has moved but now we have a telecom that's moving has to move after them they move their poles oh. now the telecom is moving but that has been progressing we have been tracking it and we're keeping that project on track and as i understand that intersection will be a circle right or like a uh, no, right now we plan on, on making that a signalized intersection oh. uh, when we finish. Um, it connects to Trenton Road. Um, this is the one that connects to Trenton and 33rd. Right. right. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve? Don't move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Uh, motion carries. Item B. B is consideration approval of change order number two for direct connectors at I-2 and Anza Lewis. This contract amendment will help develop a horizontal alignment and plan view for the direct connectors from northbound on Sal Lewis Highway to travel eastbound on Interstate 2 and a direct connector for westbound Interstate 2 traffic to direct, to direct connector to the southbound on Sal Lewis Highway. This project is a complement to the on Sal Lewis north and southbound cargo facility. The consultant has proposed a fixed fee of $54,705 for these services, staff recommends approval to contract amendment number two for the due diligence report for the direct connector for IH Interstate 2 and Ansel Lewis Highway in the amount not to exceed $54,705. Uh, we we recommend approval. No Ready? move. There are second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Item C was just approved by the bridge, not just the fence. Uh, 75000 correct? No move. That's Thank correct. You. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Item D. D is a water contract for two riding green mowers for uh, the golf course. Good afternoon, my <laughs> city commissioners. Uh, They're going to make you work now. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, purchasing and contracting department uh, solicited formal seal bids for this project. 
as shown in the bid tabulation, you see attached to your packages, two bids were received, and staff is recommending award of this purchase contract to the low bidder, Turf and Soil Management Contract Services, LLC, from Alvarado, Texas. Bid amount per unit is $39,990 times the two units that we're trying to purchase for a total award of $79,980. Questions? Motion to approve. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. The fun ones, okay. item E. E is a purchase contract for the aerial ladder fire truck. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commission. Fire Department is requesting authorization to purchase, uh, to award a purchase contract to Metro Fire Apparatus Specialists Incorporated for a new aerial ladder, the cost of $1,336,380 was budgeted at $1,235,500. And in the consent agenda, you approved a budget amendment to make up the difference of $100,880. Staff is recommending awarding the purchase. Any questions? I'll be happy to entertain. Question. Well, question. Yes. Uh, during uh, TML at, uh, in San Antonio, there was a fire truck with a ladder. Was it similar to that one? I believe it was, sir. We're, we're <clears throat> excuse me. The one we're ordering is what's called a stick. It's just the aerial ladder itself, not a basket on the end. I can't remember which one they had on display there. They but didn't it's, have a basket. Then it's just like the one we're, we're requesting. Yeah. Real nice. It is. And we have one, or how many do we right have? Right now we have two. two. One on the north side, one on the south side, station five, station six. We just replaced Station 5's a year and a half ago, and this is to replace the one at Station 6. Okay, so we're still going to continue we're, with two. Yes, sir, and we're going to keep one in reserve as well. Yes, sir. I'm motion to approve, subject to allowing Commissioner Quintanilla to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, in front of you, you have a little red hat. You should be able to get on that truck now. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Motion carries. Thank Item you. F. Award of contract for the purchase of 25 zero mobile handheld ticket riders. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, we bring to you um, this item for, for your approval. We rec uh, we're trying to purchase 25 ze zebra mobile handheld ticket riders and the uh, selected options with that. That includes about 46 uh, different printers for uh, the rest of our inventory. Uh, this is through a source well contract, uh, which is a co-op contract. Um, the total amount of this proposal is $85,523. I thought it was 1.9, like the fire truck, but it's, you know, <laughs> no, it's 80, 85000 $85,523. Uh, we built this, uh, we built, um, this into our budget in part, and we, uh, we augment this with $16,545 for a total Purchase price of 102068. The uh, 16545 is out of forfeiture fund in order to complete this purchase. How many of these handheld devices do we have in inventory? This would put us over 60 some odd. Uh, we just we just bought um, 21 uh, in the middle of the summer with some core technology money. Uh, these are 25. We've got an the, we've got an old inventory of 25 that that is that that is basically reached the end of life on that. So we're trying to build up our, our inventory uh, finally on this. And and I guess this is all subject to technology. What's the useful life of this device, uh, at least yeah. within your experience? Just a handful of years? No, no, no pun intended, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it all depends on the upgrades that become available. On. I so 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 we're we're buying we're buying this with. Uh, um, with a five-year warranty service on this, so uh, we're good for at least five, five years, years for these that we bought in the summer, and now these other 25. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Adam G. <coughs> G is a water contract for the purchase of IT Network Enterprise Firewall. We don't even understand that. What does that mean? <laughs> oh. Does that have to do something with Chief Schultz, firewall? I mean, sure. I don't know. This is, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, again, we bring you an item for a word of contract recommendation to Inside Public out of Tempe, Arizona. This is for what we call the network um, firewall uh, with selected options through, again, Omnia, which is another co-op contract. Um, our firewall that we've got currently is over about 10 years old and is reaching end of life and end of service life as well. This, uh, so we are 
we're upgrading our firewall in our network, and in doing this, we're matching City Hall's firewall. So we're marrying the, the firewall. That's the slightest idea how that works, but I know we need but it. If you, as long as you know. So the, I'm sorry? As long as you know how it works. Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Exactly. You, you plug it in, you turn it on. I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, the, bid, the bid amount of this is $52,890.65, and this was built into our FY23 budget as well. J. Paul Genst. Motion carries. Item H. H is a work Thank contract you. for the terminal roof replacement at McAllen International Airport. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. The Department of Aviation is recommending award of the contract to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Argeo Roofing and Construction of Rio Hondo, Texas, in the total amount of $2,075,245 with a contract time of 270 days. The project is budgeted at $2.2 million, so this is below that amount. At this time, I'll answer any questions you may have. Well, this how, is many so how many responsive bidders? Well, yeah. We fine. sent out 403 notices and only received one bid. Wow. I was it has not been a trend on any of our other projects. Uh, however, it's a good price. It's below budget, and we, we, we do stand yeah, by our I recommendations. Saw that. I, I, I was mm -hmm. wondering if it was wrong. How much is this? Is, is this all funded by the AIP fund? It's funded by our operating fund at oh. the airport, but we are um, seeking additional funding that's become available. There are two programs that we've applied for. There's the airport terminal uh, project program for funding that's discretionary, and then there's the bipartisan infrastructure legislation fund nice. that we have applied for. Thank you. Yes. Questions? I'm just, I'm just very concerned with one bidder on such a large project, and it's a roof. Can the city engineer give us some insight yeah. on that? Well, one of the reasons may be that, that that's a pretty big project, and a lot of roofers, mid-tier roofers, might not be able to get bonded at the $2 million capacity, and that that could be uh -huh. a reason. That's a, big, that's a big amount for a roof. Well, that's one, and there's so much business going on mm -hmm. that a lot of them don't even have time. And most airport projects have been substantially a lot bigger in terms of oh, projects. It's under budget. budget. Okay. I hear a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Item I. I is change order number one for runway 1432. The Department of Aviation recommends approval of change order number one in the amount of $71,988.77. FAA has reviewed staff's recommendation and has concurred with this recommendation. This change order will be covered by 90% FAA federal dollars and 10% PFC funds. Do I hear a motion to approve? So move. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? The motion carries. Item J. J is change order number two for the terminal restrooms renovations. Staff recommends approval of change order number two in the amount of $300,733.01 with an addition of 45 calendar days for a revised contract amount of $1,174,408.01 and 205 calendar days subject to the approval of this, uh, of the earlier budget amendment. Um, the change order will be covered with PFC funds and um, staff is recommending approval of this item. So real quick, the temporary restrooms are for how long? Uh, for the 45 days, for the remainder of this 120000 for 45 days? Yes. And we looked at different alternatives. The cost for this is that we're having those restrooms cleaned out twice a day, and that's what's really costing us. Okay. Are these, wait. All in uh, favor? Yeah. Oh, Tony, do you have a comment? Build one. Yeah, but I don't understand it. You just <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. And that's the only way to do this remodeling. To have. We we need we need the temporary restrooms, restrooms. to provide yeah, facilities I mean, pre-security. I understand that. Uh, and we have <laughs> two of them to be able to accommodate the traffic. Or at um, least nice restrooms. We right, can't just have the front right. parties. And so the cost of the actual restroom rentals is like 8000 It's the cleaning service that is high. Oh. We looked at options of using like inside our own restrooms, working with parks, uh, trying to see if we could use those, but we still have to get those cleaned, and it's a, it's a high cost. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we just pass through there for an hour. We don't realize how much traffic we have. So. We do have a lot of traffic. Motion to approve. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Motion carries on. Item K. K is amendment number six for the terminal passenger bridge. Staff recommends approval of contract amendment number six with KSA engineers for the terminal passenger boarding bridges. Um, the improvements uh, for this contract amendment are in the amount of $250,000. $47.10. This is for the design and construction management of JetBridge 2 and 4. Proposed uh, fee, the proposed cost or the budgeted amount is covered with 100% PFC funds. Are the boarding bridges still salvageable for parts or anything like that? No, these are really outdated uh, bridges. They date back 28 years. The life expectancy on equipment for FAA, as they define it, is 10 years. Mm -hmm. So this is obsolete um, Even scrap technology. Metal? Can we sell it for scrap? I mean, I we know. can look at it. Um, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Mayor Pro Tem, we leave the city of McAllen in your hands. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Mayor, uh, next item is 4A consideration and adoption of an ordinance authorizing the city manager to set food service establishment and retail food permits. Mrs. Rivera. Uh, this item is basically to do what we talked about in the workshop last at the last meeting to set a lower uh, temporary food permit for a four-day event and this gives the city manager the flexibility to do so without having to come back to commission if we should find another category of event to, that would need to be accommodated in the future. So moved. Second. Fair second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against? Thank you. Motion passes. B is providing for an amendment to the strength ordinance uh, for the McCown Fire Department. Chief Schultz. Good evening once again. The item before you is a request to amend the strength ordinance for the McAllen Fire Department. This is to activate Engine 8 uh, in anticipation of the Station 8 that's going to be coming online in about a year. Uh, we currently have 12 individuals already on staff for that position or for that station. What we're doing is reclassifying three firefighters to drivers and three firefighters to lieutenants for each of the three shifts. That's the, recommend, the request before you. So moved. Fair second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank, Thank you very much. much. That's very proactive. That's good. 5A is consideration of a variance to not require the subdivision process at 8533 Mile 8 Road. Sir, this property is located on the south side of 8 Mile, approximately 540 feet west of uh, Bryan. Property is in the ETJ and surrounding uses include single family homes as well as large tracts of land. Tres Lagos is just across the street uh, to the north. Um, that area of Tres Lagos has yet to be developed. Uh, the property has been in our ETJ since 1987. Uh, the owner brought the property, which is currently vacant, in May of this year. Uh, the applicant is requesting variants to construct a roof cover for storage and to install utilities uh, for security purpose and for an RV. The applicant is also requesting a variance to the right-of-way dedication. There are three options before you. Staff is recommending option two, which is due to the limited uh, nature of the construction that is requested. Uh, however, any further development should uh, require the subdivision. We provided the explanation by the planning director. Are there any questions from the board of commissioners? Motion to recommend option two. Okay. Is there anybody here? This is not a hearing, right? This is not a public no. hearing. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, is the applicant here? Just, just out of curiosity. Okay, very good. All right, having here a motion, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against? Hearing none, motion passes. 6A is the Immigration and Respite Center report. Mr. Johnson, good afternoon. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, uh, immigrant drop off numbers from federal agencies are creeping up a little bit. Our last report to you was 175 per day. That number has now moved last week or two weeks ago to about 186 per day and this last week was right about 237 per day. Um, our COVID-19 positivity rate dropped to 1.4% two weeks ago and this last week is back up to 2% at Anza Duas Park. Our average current occupancy at Anza Duas Park is <coughs> under 100 per night with under 200 per night in quarantine throughout the area. And our current capacity at Anzal Duas Park remains at 1,700 with the ability to increase to 4,000 quickly if needed. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? 
All right. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Thank you. Okay. Future agenda items, Mr. City Manager, 6B. Uh, I don't have any, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I think at the, any... at the last meeting, I think we were handing out a sheet, but that sheet's pretty short. Yeah. Is there anything else from the Board of Commissioners that are interested in having some item addressed as a future agenda item? Okay. Hearing not, next item. Uh, item Six. 7, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, the remainder of the items on the agenda this evening do qualify for, for consideration in executive session. I recommend that the Commission recess. Okay. We are in a recess for executive session.
ready? Okay. I, I, need, another, is, I need another commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. We're missing Tony. We need Tony. The time now is uh, 6.12 and we are returning back into regular session and completed executive session. Mr. City Attorney. Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. With respect to item 7A1, I recommend that the City Commission consider a motion authorizing the City Manager and City Attorney to negotiate the economic development incentives that were described in executive session. I'll entertain any motion. So move. For your second. Second. Anyone against? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against? Same sign. Hearing none. Motion passes. Next item. Mayor Pro Tem, with respect to item 7B1, I recommend that the City Commission consider a motion authorizing the City Manager and City Attorney to negotiate the terms for development of the real property uh, consistent as described in executive session and in conformity with requirements of Texas state law. Do I hear a motion? So move. Are you a second? Uh, second. Okay. Let's not fall asleep. Okay. Okay. I mean, heard a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone against? Hearing none, motion carries. Item. Mayor uh, Pro Tem, with respect to item 7C, uh, there's no action required by the City Commission at this time. With respect to item 7D, I recommend that the City uh, commission consider a motion authorizing the city manager and city attorney to negotiate terms to provide self-insurance for the Trust Lagos tours. I hear a motion. To move. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against? Motion carries. Next item. And Mayor Pro Tem, with respect to the last item on the agenda, item 7E, I recommend the city commission take no action at this time. Very well. And the time now is 613 on Monday evening. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Adjourned. Thank you. Regular City Commission meetings are held on the second and fourth Monday of each month. Meetings are rebroadcast on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on the McAllen Cable Network.